Okay, so welcome everybody. For those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Alejandra Siroca, and also because we're recording this, my name is Alejandra Siroca. I'm a transformative communication teacher and coach, and I have devoted my life since I was a kid to the study of language and communication as a vehicle uh, for consciousness evolution and transformation. Even when I was a little kid, you hear my accent. My particular accent is a combination. My first language is Spanish. I grew up in Argentina and lived there until I was 26 years old. And um, then I moved to the Caribbean, lived there for a few years. Then I moved to Boston and I've been here in the US for 26 years. But since I was a little girl, Growing up in Argentina, in the north of Argentina, it's a very touristy town. If you've been to Argentina, maybe you've been there. It's not Buenos Aires. It's in the north near Bolivia. It's called Salta, like salt that you put on food to sprinkle on food, but with an A at the end. And uh, there were tourists from all over. And when I was young, I would, I, one of my first memories is leaving my parents' hands when we were walking rushing, running to tourists and talking to them only to find out they didn't speak Spanish. I was like, what's happening here? They, they don't understand me and I do not understand them. And um, so I set on a journey at a very young age. I can tell you stor stories, which I will probably through the course of these workshops about how I learned different languages and then how I was really curious about the power that language has to hurt others, to heal relationships, to help us evolve, to help us know ourselves, and to, re to um, create the kind of lives and relationships that we have. So, through a series of lots of studying, and I continue to study because even though I call myself a teacher, first and for foremost, I'm a student. I, I will be a student until my last breath. And I will continue to study how language and communication can bring forth what I think we all want in our life, which is peace, love, compassion, equality, equity, and, um, and the ability to see each other as a human, a precious human family. So with that, we are going to start today with a little meditation. We're going to connect to ourselves because the deeper we connect to ourselves, the more available we are for connection with others and the more deeply we can connect to others. So we'll start with that. Then I'm, I'm just gonna for those of you who love knowing and their minds need to know, what are we gonna do today? So after that, we are going to talk a little bit about what we did in our first workshop, in our second workshop, and in this third workshop. So they're monthly workshops, they build on each other, they're drop-ins, we record them. So if you can't come, you can watch the recording and it's useful to see kind of like the arc that we're working with so that you know where we are in today. However, if you cannot come to a workshop, it's totally fine. You will still benefit from what we're doing in e each time we meet. So after we do that, we're going to do some partner or, or work in triads, depending on, on how things go. You can ask questions anytime. And most of all, I want to say, I see you as the authority of yourselves. I am not your authority. The, and you have, and I completely respect your autonomy and your choice. So please take care of yourselves. If you're uncomfortable, find a comfortable position. If you need to use the restroom, use the restroom. If you need something with the temperature, you need a blanket or something, please take care of yourselves, okay? I deeply respect when we do that because then the more we can take care of ourselves, the more availability we'll have to take care of others. So with that, let's just take a moment to connect to ourselves. And 
If it helps you to close your eyes, please close your eyes. If not, that's fine. Look down and relax your eyeballs, whether your eyes are closed or open. Just bring a sense of relaxation and ease to your eyes and your eyelids. Invite a sense of relaxation and ease to your face, forehead, ears, cheeks, jaw, the crown of the head, the back of the head, your neck and shoulders, arms, your spine, all the way down to your coccyx, your tailbone, the front of your body, from your collarbones all the way down to your pelvic floor. Bring a sense of ease or invite a sense of ease and relaxation to your legs from the hip sockets all the way down to the soles of the feet. Take a moment to notice what it's like to be here in this body at this time. Notice what it's like to be you in this body, in this place, a community-led Sangha, a grassroots collective, a beautiful group of people who have decided to give their attention, effort, energy, for the liberation and the release of suffering and the bringing forth of compassion for all beings. Notice what it's like to be in this moment, in your body, in this community right now, in this building, that is in territory of the Ramatush Ohlone people. In this city of San Francisco, in this country, with the current circumstances that this country is going through, the United States, upcoming elections. Notice what it's like to be in your body, in this community, in this building, on this land, in this city and country, in this world. where so many beautiful things are occurring and so many harmful and horrific things are occurring. And notice your breath. Welcome your breath. Receive your breath. Listen to your breath. And now take a moment to acknowledge all the circumstances, people, 
and events in your life that have allowed you to be here in this moment. Including if you use transportation, all the people who have contributed to you having transportation. And if you walked here, all the people who have contributed to even have the clothing that you're wearing. If you ate this morning, all the people who have contributed to the food that nourished you today. If you found us through the internet, all the people who have contributed to the internet and putting this information together so that you could know about this place and bring yourself here. And it is with that sense and acknowledgement of gratitude and interconnectedness that I invite you to notice an intention or to generate an intention for today's workshop. How would you like to show up today? How would you like to show up for yourself so that you can show up more lovingly, more compassionately, more wisely, more confidently, more clearly, more maturely with others. and invite that intention to be your guiding principle for these two hours at least. Thank you. Thank you all and welcome again. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. I want to talk a little bit about our journey of what we have been doing. In our first workshop, which was back in September, we talked about a, I didn't say this, but I all the integration of the studies that I have been doing and engage in, I call that language alchemy. And language alchemy is, has three prongs. It is an awareness practice. It is an interpersonal communication approach. And it is a form of evolutionary activism, understanding that through the way we communicate and through the language we use, we can evolve so that we can have the kind of world that we all need and that works for all, not just for a few. And in our first workshop, we worked with the principle that language is one of the most powerful tools we have available at all times. And so in that workshop, we did some exercises in which we looked at what feels easy for us to communicate and what feels hard for us to communicate. And we wrote lists of what was easy and what was hard to communicate. And then we looked at why it was easy, why it was hard to communicate that. And we saw that there's not one size fits all communication 
for some people, it was easy to communicate their feelings. For some people, it was very vulnerable and hard to communicate their feelings. For some people, it was easy to vent to others. For some people, it was really hard to say anything that could be construed as negative about themselves or others. So we got to see how in our journey of communication, there is diversity. And then in the second workshop, we talked about how most of the time the language we speak is habitual. And we usually say that, no, the language I speak is natural. This is me. This is how I naturally communicate. And usually it is how we habitually communicate because the language we speak is a language we have learned. I asked you if when you were a baby, you were born already speaking a language. And you all said, no, you learned that. We all learned how to communicate through language. And we talked about how the language we have learned to communicate is not just how to say, this is a microphone, but we have also learned how to communicate when we feel hurt, what to say out loud, how to communicate when we made a mistake and we hurt others, whether we apologize or we don't apologize and how we apologize, how to communicate when we receive a gift and we talked about how the ways in which we communicate that we have learned, the good news about this is that if we know that there's some way in which we are communicating that's not beneficial to us, the other, the relationship, the world, that we can learn a different way because we have learned the language we speak. So we can learn a different language. And that's kind of like how we left it in our second workshop. We did an inquiry in which we talked about the impact that our communication had, the impact it had on ourselves. And we also looked at the internal dialogue and the experience that we had in our bodies when we wanted to communicate something that felt um, difficult. In our second workshop, we also talked about kind of like three zones. We talked about a comfort zone, a stretch zone, and a panic zone. And we talked about how when we are learning to evolve with our communication, if we stay in the comfort zone, we're going to keep communicating habitually. So, for example, in my case, I shared with you that I didn't learn when I was a child that it was okay to communicate sadness or anger. That was not, it was, I was taught that I need to be joyful and happy and make things good for you all the time. So I had to learn to stretch into first, including the idea that, oh, I feel sad. I feel upset, I feel angry, and then learn how to communicate to others when I felt sad with them or about something they said or did, or I felt angry. So that I had to stretch and include more skills to be able to communicate more feelings, more experiences. When we are in the panic zone, we said that we're not really going to work here with the panic zone because the panic zone sometimes has uh, a lot of either residues or very active traumas. And I'm not a therapist. I'm not a psychotherapist. So we said that we're going to leave those topics for other people who can support us with that. So what we're going to be working here in all these workshops is how to not be so like, um, like uh, a, uh, the image I have is a koala bear on a on a hammock and just be super comfortable with our communication and keep going through life as an adult you know just not stretching at all and being in that habit and maybe with a drink with an umbrella you know <laughs> or how do we stretch ourselves to include more skills to learn more skills and to communicate in a way 
that is going to be more in alignment with our values and that can bring us the kind of relationships, lives, and world that we want. Today, the topic of today is, well, if we are going to stretch our communication, then guess what we have to do? We have to grow our communication up. And just because we're wearing these adult suits, doesn't mean we're communicating like an adult. We may still be communicating like a five-year-old throwing a tantrum sometimes. So we're going to start to grow our communication up so that it catches up with who we are right now. Beautiful, conscious, compassionate, loving, capable, mature adults. That's who we are. So we want to bring our communication to that level. That's what we're going to do today grow up in our communication or let our communication grow up and catch up with us. In order to do that, we need to have some shared understandings of how we want to be with one another during these a couple of hours or less now, a couple of hours. And so I have some agreements here for uh, multicultural interactions, which as I've been sharing in previous workshops, we are all multicultural beings. So just because I'm an immigrant and grew up in another country doesn't mean that only I get to be multicultural. All of you are multicultural <laughs> because of the family of origin that you had. There was a set of cultures, a set of rules and behaviors there. The schools you attended, there were sets of, of rules and behaviors there, another layer of culture. If you grew up with any particular um, philosophical beliefs, religions or no religions, oh, that's another layer of culture. If, um, if you grew up with particular gender dynamics, well, or no gender dynamics, that's another layer of culture. If um, if you grew up in the neighborhoods you grew up, there were sets of rules and behaviors. Oh, that's another layer of culture. Depending on what you do now for a living, there could be very well established uh, sets of rules and behaviors. Oh, that's another layer of culture. And um, what your political ideas are and who you talk to and who you relate to. Oh, that's another layer of culture. So. We are all multicultural beings. Any questions about that? And questions, comments, objections, always welcome. OK? Including my belly, who's talking to me now. OK. So the agreements that I'd love to put forth, if you um, are OK with that, is to have openness and to have curiosity. The wisdom that's going to emerge in this group is not my wisdom. It is the collective wisdom. As I said, you are just like me, conscious, mature, capable, loving, compassionate, kind, resourceful, wise adults. Not just me, all of us. So we're doing this together. And um, I want to invite us all to bring compassion. So if there's pain, Passion comes from the word pain, from padere, from passion. Calm is to be with pain. We're going to make space for the pain. We're going to be with it because pain is part of life. We know the Four Noble Truths uh, that we know from Buddhism. The first Noble Truth is there's pain in life. So how do we be with it? And to have compassionate understanding, which rests on openness and curiosity. Also, to bring forth the sense of authority. Authority is related to the word author. You are the authors of your own life. You are the authors of your own communication. So not because I said, say this or try <laughs> saying this. That could be like training wheels, but then find your own voice. That's so much more powerful than repeating whatever I could say. What I say is powerful for me. Maybe not for you. So trust that. And then have the bravery to 
be on that stretch zone and sometimes feel that oh, it feels vulnerable, it feels a little shaky, it feels like I'm going to be annihilated, like there's quicksand and I'm going to disappear. Try to have the bravery because that is the fertile ground from which we alchemists can find the gold or forge the gold. Um, to have a sense of humility and maturity. I don't know everything there is to know about communication and I'm sitting here talking to you about communication. There's no way I can know everything there is to know about language and communication because I'm not every single person that has ever existed and will ever exist on this planet, communicating in every single language, in every single circumstance that we human beings go through. It is impossible. So I am here to learn too. The word humility uh, comes from hummus, earth, and it shares the root with human. So let's just be human and uh, mature. I want to invite listening and uh, authenticity, which also with authority, they share the same root. Respect to understand that there are so many different ways of communicating that are right, that are perfect in, the, in a particular context. They're wise and kind, even when they may sound firm or different from ours. And to have the willingness to explore, to be able to have transparency. So if there's anything that I say or someone else says that is really uh, touching something hard in you, bring it forth. Have that bravery. Let's hold space for it. This is what we're here for. Or else, you know, um, if we don't stretch ourselves, how are we going to evolve? And also to create a space for belonging and warmth where everybody's welcome. Those are the foundational values of the SF Dharma Collective. They are my foundational values too. So let's bring them forth. Um, and equality to understand that there are different ways, different styles, different cultural understandings of communication. In some cultures, we're very direct. In some cultures, we're very circuitous and indirect. Is one better than the other? They're just different. It depends on the context. And um, confidentiality in the sense that I want to invite you to not post things about, I can't believe Brit said this in front of everybody, but rather, you know, I went to this workshop and I heard this, and this is what it inspired, touched, or, um, in, or um, generated questions for me. So we're sharing from our own experience. And then to embrace diversity. I mean, look at nature. Can you imagine if every single flower was the same, every animal was the same, every insect? We only had one kind of insect. We would not have the rich, beautiful nature that we have that has supported us and nourished us. Um, at least up until now, up until today. The same is with us human beings. So let's embrace that. So for now, what I'm going to ask you is, I asked you during the meditation to generate an intention. And notice if your intention pairs up with one of these values that I'm inviting us to cultivate. So just notice. And if it doesn't pair up, just notice if there's one that could be, you know, close. So I'd love everybody to have one because for the beautiful Zoom people who are joining us, we're going to go into a little pair group in which I am going to invite you to find someone you don't know here and just let them know my intention during meditation is to show up with blank. And it is related to one of these values, blank. That's the first part. The second part is because if I am able to bring forth these intentions, this is how I think it will contribute to 
my life for at least to these two hours. So um, I forgot to say, say your name. My name is Alejandra. These are uh, the pronouns I go by are she, ella, her. And uh, my intention for today was to be fully present with all of you and learn. And I see that that's in alignment with uh, humility and maturity. And if I'm able to show up with the intention I generated and uh, to be present and learn and have humility and maturity, I think the way it would contribute uh, not just to me, but to the world is to be able to understand that we're all teachers. And we all have something to teach each other and to learn from each other. So that's it. Something like that. Okay. Beautiful. You can all wait. Okay. So I'm going to invite us to find someone you haven't talked to before, you do not know. And again, share your name, the pronouns you go by, the generate the intention you generated during meditation, how it pairs up with one of these values, and what would it bring forth when you're able to fulfill your intention, okay? And you'll have like about two minutes per person. I will tell you when to switch. For the Zoom people, you will have about four minutes. So maybe you can time yourselves and say, okay, I'll go first, I'll go for two minutes, and then switch, and, and then come back in four minutes. Okay, let's do it. Actually, I have a question. Yes. The last, the last instruction. Oh, sorry. The, the last, last instruction. instruction was to... I didn't quite get the last. The thing. last instruction, what would it bring forth to your life, to your relationships, to the world when you're able to fulfill your intention and the agreement? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Two minutes. If you haven't switched, please switch to your to your partner. Right now, I'm 
made one of the biggest mistakes in my life. I think I'm going to go to the So share your last thought. Oh, Noam is now online, okay. I see Noam, Tia, Sarana, and someone else who I can, Scott? And Scott, okay, welcome. And you can thank your partner. And then I, I'd like to ask you, we did something like this last time, but last time was different because I just asked you which, which of these resonates with you and why? Now this time, the, um, the exercise that we did was to pair it up with an intention and what would it do for you if you're able to bring this forth? Because we're moving into not just like, oh yeah, like this is nice, but we're moving into growing up our communication. So we are activating ourselves to embody what, how we want to show up in the world. So I want to ask you, how did it go? Any surprises, anything that was interesting for you? Questions, objections, they're all welcome. And just so everybody knows, a microphone isn't necessarily for amplification, so the folks online can hear us. Beautiful. I'll run the mic to anybody. Yes. And this is open to the folks online as well. And thank you. I need to make another housekeeping announcement. I have my dear friend Danielle here who's taking pictures mainly of me because I, uh, I'm going to be publish a book next year. And I have been told that on my website, I need to have tea, tea, uh, photos of me teaching. So my dear friend Danielle agreed to come and take pictures. And she may get like on my face if she gets close to you and you're uncomfortable with that just put a hand out you will not be offending her <laughs> thank you uh, i thought it was interesting that i chose compassionate understanding and i didn't realize until i was talking with brandon that that's what i most need within myself right that when i'm having difficulty compassion is the is what does not come forth that easily in dealing with whatever the difficulty is. Yes, and there's a, you know, you're bringing something up that's so important and true, Patricia, which is that that which we want the most from others is sometimes what's hard for us to give to ourselves. And that which is hard for us or what we wish to give to others is something that unless we give it to ourselves first, it's going to be difficult to give to others. Yeah, thank you. Anybody else? 
online or here? Going once, going twice. Silence old. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we all have different timings. So sometimes we need a little bit more time and that's okay. If uh, in 10 minutes you're like, I want to say something about what we just did 15 minutes ago, that's fine. Totally fine. You're welcome in every way here. So we are talking about growing our communication up and we need to be able to grow our communication up, especially when we're having disagreements and conflicts, because that's really where we show up. We tend to show up as a child in communication by throwing a tantrum, by um, shutting down. I don't know what to do here. I have no power by running away, changing the topic or, you know, actually leaving the room. So because of uh, there are other things I wanted to bring to you, but because of the current circumstances where we are, elections are happening very soon. Holidays are happening very soon. We're getting together with family. We're going to be getting together with people. There's a lot of anxiety and a lot of divisiveness in not just in our world, but in our communities, in every family. All my clients are telling me, how do I talk to my brother? How do I talk to, it used to be the uncle. How do I talk to my uncle? Now it's like, how do I talk to my sibling? How do I talk to my parents? How do I talk to my best friend who has a different opinion of the world? Or we don't see eye to eye on something. Or how do I talk to my spouse? I have friends who, um, this political divisiveness and uh, many topics have eroded a lot of what they had built in their most intimate relationships with their spouses. So I wanted to bring forth this topic of, okay, let me help people today. How do we show up in disagreements? Because we may all have them right now. So I'd like to invite you to think about a disagreement that has already happened and that you are af afraid or weary or um, uncomfortable or feeling awkward that it may happen again. So for example, it could be asking people, who are you gonna vote for? Or you're gonna vote, right? Or it could be anything like that. So think about, I'd love everybody to have something and we're going to do some writing. There are some writing materials there. I want to invite you when you come to these workshops to bring a journal and keep a journal so that you keep, can keep track of what you are working on. But we always have writing materials. So um, take some paper and take some pen. And just like I said it in one sentence, who are you going to vote for? Or are you going to vote for this candidate or that candidate? Or what do you think about this proposition? And maybe that's a point of contention that has been an argument that you've had or an argument that you're afraid of having. So let's write a one liner. It's like a headliner of this potential argument. Does everybody have paper? So just one sentence, one sort of headliner about what this issue is about, or it could be someone's going to ask me a question and we're going to go into an argument. 
what's that question that you get asked that you head into an argument with the other? It could be something very personal. I have many of my communication students and coaching clients who tell me they go to a family gathering and they're asked like, so who are you dating? Or um, did you find a job yet? Things like that, you know, it could be anything. It could be comments about your body, comments about any kind of quality, your intelligence, anything. So just want to make sure everybody has something to work with. And I am going to ask you, we're going to pass the mic around and, and I'm going to ask you to share the headliner, just like I said, the question, who are you going to vote for, or you're going to vote this year, right, or it could be just just the question, we're not going to judge it, we're just going to share, what is this issue, because we all have different things that we go into a disagreement with someone. And we want to put in the space the diversity of things that could cause a disagreement. Could be like, what's your favorite color? Oh, and then they're going to infer something from that. And then we're going to head into a disagreement about that. What do you think of fracking? It could be anything. So let's start, Jimmy. You have the, the mic. So are you willing to start in? then you're we'll pass the mic around and and we also want to hear from people on zoom sure um it, it was a little bit difficult for me to think of something but um something that has that that comes up is with this one particular close friend who often assumes that i'm going to share his idea or his thinking or even behavior pattern around personal relationships. And if I differ, he doesn't buy it. Mm. He, he, he thinks I'm jiving him somehow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. So someone who wants you to agree, and if you disagree, he doesn't buy it, and he thinks you're driving him. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So pass the mic. Um, so mine... And I, by the way, let's say our name. So Dylan, okay. to you. Yep, so my name is Dylan, and mine... I. I, the one that resonates the most was the politics one for me because I tend to be more passive and I don't tend to get into too many arguments. Um, but politics is one that's hard for me because kind of like, who are you voting for? Or are you going to vote? There's almost no great answer for some people, you know, no matter, or at least that's how I feel. Yes. So I tend to dislike getting that question in general. Right. Because I, I get it at work too. Um, but that's one that you can really set people off on if you mm -hmm. don't answer the way that they expect. Yeah. Um, so that's the one that resonates with me more than anything else. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dylan. Mm -hmm. um, hi, my name is James. Um, and my headliner was, why didn't you take the time to respond? Why didn't you take the time to respond? Thank you. Thank you, James. Um, I don't have a specific question, but I 
tend to um, not react well when trying to talk about politics with my conservative relatives. Let's tend to be a big issue. Yeah, politics with conservative relatives, Britt. Thank you. Kristen? I had a little bit of a hard time doing a one, I think, but um, I guess the sent, like the sentence frame that came up was, um, so I'm a teacher and um, I get it for work, it's often referred to as like, the district always blank and they're wrong. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. With an assumption as though there is a complete understanding of what's going on. And, and, and I think that's the root. Yeah. The frustration. Thank you. Um, may I ask a question? And say your name too. My, my name is. Oh, oh, I'm Kristen. Kristen. This is Brendan now. Yes. Um, not Kristen. Not Kristen. <laughs> uh, um, is it like my response is irritation or my response is discomfort? We're going to work on our responses, but this is just to know what's the headliner? What's like the topic that gets to that argument? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> uh, have I told you about, um, and then it's like a story that I've heard uh -huh. from my, uh, uh, parent, uh, uh, yeah, one of my parents. Okay. Have I told you, and you've heard this many times. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm familiar with yes. that story. Yeah. Every time. Every time. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> No? Oh, Patricia, yes, Patricia. Say your name, Patricia. Oh, uh, Patricia, and um, this is my brother uh, in New Jersey who uh, is a, a liberal, except that when he gets with his friends, he becomes conservative. And he says, you s so I'm saying to him, you say you don't know, you don't agree with this woke thing? Mm-hmm, aha. Uh -huh. Just say you don't agree with this woke thing. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Noam, and my topic is the war in Israel and Gaza. Yeah, the war in and, Israel and, and Gaza and Lebanon, yeah. yes. And Danielle? Oh, yes, you can do it too. You're here. Um, I could make a long list, but probably um, either politics or the war in Either politics or the war. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Hi, my name's Robert, and uh, my topic jumped out at me is facing the uh, effects of trauma on my communication and uh, how we communicate our, our childhood's conditioning and our unexamined behaviors. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Thank you. And how about people online? We'd love to hear you. We see a chair <laughs> that's sort of emerging. <laughs> I think Tia took a break. And Scott, are you willing, able to unmute yourself? Not sure if Scott is muted or not. I cannot really see from here. He's muted, yeah. Okay. Okay, the chair has reappeared. <laughs> okay. Okay, there's Tia. Hi, we're. Perfect timing. Um, thank you. Uh, I um, I was going to start with one of the politics ones, but then somebody said something that made me realize that the the phrase, "Well, can't you just?" Uh, whether it's coming out of my mouth or whether I'm hearing it is uh, is a rough one. Okay, can't you just dot dot dot? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And Scott. Going once, you can also write on the chat if you want. Twice. Okay, all right. So, and I'm not sure if Sarana is still there. So, okay, great. Okay. So, um, 
moving on with this, we're going to work with three concepts on how we are going to uh, grow our communication up. And one of them, I'm actually going to write it, write it here. Um, I had these little cards. Just... If we would like to grow our communication up, it needs to be the first word that starts with A, can you all see it says A here, is awareness. So we're going to start with awareness. What we want to do, if we want to grow up our communication, we need to be aware of what happens, how this disagreement happens. So let's think about what happens when you hear oops, these phrases that, or when you go into these topics that you have brought up. Let me give you an example. I wrote this example. Um, asking people who they will vote for will be the headliner. And then what happens? Well, I may ask, being afraid, they will vote for a candidate I would not want them to vote for. And so I then think they are going to say something that to me will sound ridiculous or it will be fake news. And so then I may get upset with them and start arguing, but come on, like that's ridiculous, that's fake news, don't you? read this news or didn't you hear that or how can you but don't you have these values and so depending on who it is it could become very intense so that could be how the argument happens let's say with another person uh, it could be they ask me who i'm going to vote for and i tell them and then they start poking holes at my argument or, or why I want to vote for this person. And so then I may not know what to say and I shut up, I shut down, and then we change the subject and we're not able to talk about it. So this is the awareness of how this disagreement happens. And if I were to talk to this person again, probably a very similar thing would happen again. So I'd like to, and I wrote, you know, like three or four bullet points of what would happen. So I'd love for you to sort of have that anatomy of this disagreement. So when you hear your family stories, when you hear the district is blank and they're wrong, then what happens that turns this into a disagreement? You can write about what happens for you, what happens for the other, how does it end? So when we had, the headliner was the beginning. I'd love for you to write the middle and the end. What happens when you talk to your brother in New Jersey and you tell him these things? You know, oh, you don't agree with the word woke or something like that. Then what does the other person say? How do you respond or react? How does it end? How does this argument end? So I'm gonna give you about three minutes to write this down.
Okay. Do we have more or less the what happens? Okay. So I'm going to so we have here the first word, right? We have awareness. So a little bit more legible than before. So we have awareness. Now we know what happens. And the second word, if we want to grow our communication up, or the second aspect that we need to bring is intentionality. We need to bring our intentions. So let me ask you this. As you wrote, what happens? Let me ask you, did you have any idea what your intention was getting into this argument? Or did they just catch you by surprise? Did, you, you don't need to write this down. You can just say, did it does it catch you by surprise? Or do you have an intention going into it or as you are in it? Yeah, the intention to be right. The intention to be right, which is not an intention. Thank you. That's an agenda. That's a goal. That's an agenda. I'm right, and I'm going to prove to you that I'm right. Thank you. Yes. So do we usually have an intention when we're caught up in the argument? No. No. I don't. You don't. OK. Who agrees with Jimmy? OK, let's show hands. OK, so some of you did not. So let's give them the mic. What was? What do you think is your intention as you are in the argument? It's uh, dismissing the other. OK, great. So that is a habit. That's a communication habit of how we react when we don't like what we hear, we dismiss the other. Right, that's not an intention. And it's so good to see, because see, when we are talking about the word intentions, you know, the word intention, the root of the word intention comes from Middle French. It comes from archery. I share that last workshop, I think it was, or sometime, or in my podcast, I've shared that many times. <laughs> Uh, in my newsletters, in everything I do, I share this. But intention, it comes from Middle French, from archery. When you are stretching the bow to direct the arrow in a particular direction. So intention requires us to stretch and to make an effort. When we have an agenda, I want to be right is an agenda which we confuse with an intention. We're not really um, stretching ourselves into how we want to show up in that interaction. When we are doing things like dismissing when, I, when we feel uncomfortable, when we don't like what we hear, we are just reacting. We're not having an intention. So it's useful to know this because sometimes we think, oh, yeah, intention, I have an intention. It's easy to know what an intention is. But we need to remember we're growing our communication up. So we need to understand what intention really means when we want to show up as mature, conscious, loving, compassionate, capable, wise, kind adults, which is not a tall order because that's who we are. It is who we are. We just disconnect from who we are. And in those moments, especially when there's disagreement and conflict, we tend to show up habitually. And we tend to show up how we learned to show up when we were young. Or how it worked for us to show up when we were young. So what other intentions, um, for those of you who didn't raise your hand, what other intentions did you have during the argument when you said, no, it didn't catch me by surprise, I didn't find myself in it, or I didn't have any intentions, I did have one. Anybody? 
I was, I think you just said what I was going to say, essentially. Okay. You took the words out of my mouth. Uh, but usually my, connected. <laughs> usually my intention is just to defend myself and get very defensive because it feels like they're attacking some part of you, of what makes you, you usually. Right. And so now you know that that defensiveness is what? It's a reaction, right? Yes. You're, yeah. It is a reaction. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it is because there is a story. And the story, which is, you know, you're right on point, Dylan, because see, I told you, it didn't matter that you didn't come to the first two workshops. You're right on point because you're right where we're going to go. That story of I need to defend myself, they're attacking some part of me, creates separation with the other person. And that's why we have the argument because there is a story of separation in psychology that is called the self-other split. We split. So we can start the morning with meditation, we can do yoga, we can do qigong, we can do tai chi, we can, we can do journal writing, and then, you know, where we're feeling the oneness and the interconnectedness, and Yes, and we look out the window, we see a bird fly, and oh, the expression of the divine, and this is so beautiful. Boom. We go into an argument, and that interconnectedness, that union, that whatness, it is slit. And that's when we have the argument. We have a self-other split. You are not like me. I am not like you. So I want to ask you, in this argument that you now know kind of like the anatomy of it, you have awareness about it, and we don't bring intentionality usually. That's why we get caught in the argument. What, we, what happens very quickly is that we split with the other. So I want you to write down who are you when you're having this argument and who do you think the other is? Are you the victim and the other the oppressor? Is the other uh, powerful and you're powerless? Yes, yes. Brennan, please. I, thank you. Uh, how do I find out what my intention is? We're going to work on that. Oh, don't worry about that. Yeah, for now, not. Not okay. for now. Because I don't know. Yes, okay. beautiful. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Tia, hand up. Tia, hand up. Okay. Yep, she's back. She's back. Great. Both hands up. I'm here. I'm here. And my mom can just wait a second. Um, uh, uh, if I can, like, there's a uh, uh, intensity, like, when the word argument is uh, available to describe it, like, there's an intensity mm -hmm. where I'm still kind of working on listening to understand, which feels like an intention. And then at some point, depending on the intensity level, I switch over to being angry. And then I'm all in reactivity. I need to be right. What the hell's wrong with you? Like all of that. So sometimes I feel like I can hold on to an intention. And then sometimes I just lose it all. Right. In the same conversation even. Yes. So when in that moment when the anger takes over, I'd love for you to notice who are you? And who are you taking the other person to be? So let's just, let's just write that pair. Who are you taking yourself to be? And who are you taking the other person to be? And in 10 minutes, Jimmy, you volunteer to put money in my car. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. So it could be, I'm smart, the other person is an idiot. It could be the opposite. I'm an idiot, the other person is smart. It could be, I am powerful, the other person is powerless. Or the opposite. They are powerful, I have no power. 
It could be they are an enemy and they need to be destroyed. And I am the destroyer. Um, it could be they are an aggressor and I am the victim or, oh, I have become an aggressor and they have become my victim. It could be um, they are right and I am wrong or I am right, they are wrong. I am all knowing, they are ignorant. Some, you know, or they are all knowing, they know so much, know it all, and I'm, an, I'm ignorant, I'm a fool. So let's hear some of these pairs because they're fun sometimes to know what we create in our minds and that is what puts us in the what in the intensity of the argument that leads us to communicate with our patterns our habits react or have agendas because we have disconnected brandon how about you start because you're close to the mic Already? yeah and we'll just pass the mic I'm not being heard. I'm not real. I don't matter. They are a robot. They are a robot. Okay. Thank you. Um, mine is, uh, I, I know stuff. They don't. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> I'm thoughtful. They're not being curious. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I guess sometimes it's like I feel more informed than the person I'm talking to. So or, I'm more informed. Or just more justified in my opinion than theirs. And, and so if you are more informed, who are they? They're uh, less informed. Less informed. Mm -hmm. Clueless? Not necessarily clueless. Not clueless, just less informed. Okay. It's very compassionate of you. Okay. <laughs> Not too judgmental. Not too judgmental, <laughs> yes. Well, I do feel judgmental. So oh, yes. I'm the Bring it on. I'm the suffering saint. The suffering saint. <laughs> the suffering oh, saint. Yes. Um, and they're, you know, the, the one getting it wrong or the one doing the wrong, the perpetrator. The perpetrator, yes. Um, so with the politics, I feel like oftentimes people can see you as, or me, as a tool to be used to further their own goals, right? Mm -hmm. So then, so then they, they see, you know, you as something to use, essentially. So they are the manipulators, mm -hmm. you are them, you are manipulatable. Yes, yeah. We just created a word, right? Because <laughs> I don't know if that word exists. <laughs> okay. Or the object of manipulation. Mm -hmm. Yes. I came to a very simplistic judgment that I'm good and I'm right, they're bad, they're wrong. Yes, because that's the essence, Robert. That's exactly the essence. Someone's good and right, the other is bad and wrong. Yeah, beautiful. Um, I, I was working with um, my siblings, my brothers, and um, the dynamic between us is like this very intense one-upmanship you know mm. who's right and and kind of underlying it is the one who wins is the one who gets you know the love of our parents so that's uh -huh. that's like another level yes um and then in particular with my older brother because growing up he was always the smarter knowing one mm. so then there's a, a little bit of him being the oppressor and me being the, the victim. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah, and then when there's rewards or punishment for one or the other, that adds another layer of complexity, yeah. It's interesting, because I, I mean, I'm, the, I'm definitely the oppressor, the know-it-all, the smart one, the powerful one, but I didn't think about it till a moment ago that it's it's all it's for survival yes yes and who needs to survive 
Good point. <laughs> Is it the idea of who you are, how you want to be seen, your identity, identities? Well, I'm thinking more along the idea of being a child. Ah, yes. Yes. Have you looked at my notes of our next workshop? Because we're going to talk about the language of survival in our next workshop. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Jimmy, right on time. Really? Yeah. Really? So going back to the, the last thing that we're The doing? list. The list. Like, who are you when you get caught up in these arguments? Oh, I and who's the other? The wiser, more mature, and more expert. Exactly. And look at how he's saying it. I'm the wiser, <laughs> more mature, more expert. You're embodying that. Great. Right. And right. so the other is, who's the other? And the, and, and the other is um, an immature, um, unaware, misogynistic, 50-year-old adolescent. Right. Yeah. But there's also his, his, his perspective of the roles we're playing. And, and, and is, it, is there any value in me going into that? Uh, not yet. Okay. Not yet. Yeah. Great. OK. Danielle, how about you? And we want to hear from oh, people on Zoom, too. I'm glad you did not step on those glasses. Uh, mine is just that I have more information and the other person has less information. Yes, another compassionate person. You and Bridge should do like the next thing together. <laughs> okay, we'll chat later. <laughs> yes. Okay, beautiful. I could, and Zoomers? I could go. Um, and um, I, um, if it's, if it's uh, someone that I uh, am intimate with, I, it's the being seen one almost always. Like I, I always, I, I, my, it's the bumping up against the assumption that you understand me and that you see me. Um, and clearly something's happening with that. And then the other one, um, it really like the argument parts come in when values feel different because mm -hmm. my values are the right values. Ah. And if you don't share them, what the hell is wrong with you? Right. right. And mm -hmm. if I think we're friends, why don't I know what that difference is already? Why is it a surprise and we're arguing? Um, right. So, yeah. So they're wrong about something and it's probably something I think about ethics, but yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And is Scott around? Does he have anything to say? Scott's passing still. So yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. So at the very core, as Robert was saying, it's about I'm good, you're bad, I'm right, you're wrong, or the opposite. You are good, I'm bad, you are right, I'm wrong. It's one of those that leads us into an argument, but it is this split that happens very, very quickly where we forget as adults that we are interconnected, we forget that the language we speak impacts others and us and the world around us. We disconnect from that for that moment. So, Noam? I have a question. Yes, bring it up. Um, in the scenario I've been thinking about, what ends up happening more often than an argument is the avoidance of discussion. Ah, right. And I just want to make sure, like, it, I, it, so far, everything you're saying still applies because yes. I have the, the in argument your, in my head, right? And I avoid it, but kind of will because will we be that's what we that? children do, right? When we are children, we avoid what's uncomfortable right. and what could potentially um, be painful or awkward because we don't know how to be with it. So what I'm suggesting is that as we grow our communication up, we need to learn to engage. We need to learn to stay in dialogue. We need to learn to show up and not get so caught up and remember the interconnectedness that we all have. And that will mean that we will have to have 
not only awareness, bring an intention in that moment. As soon as we realize I am in an argument, what's my intention? How do I want to show up? Do I want to show up with curiosity? Do I want to have openness? Do I want to have friendliness and warmth? Do I want to show up with power and not feel like the other is manipulating me? Do I want to show up with confidence and not feel like I am the victim? Do I want to show up with humility and see what the other person knows or doesn't know that I may not know? Um, do you, do I want to show up maybe to willingness to explore? Why is it that they're telling me the same story again and again? Is there something that they don't feel heard um, by me? Or um, I want to, maybe my intention in this moment is to have equality. Oh, you know what? I thought we shared our values, but I see that in this moment, what the value that's really calling your attention at this very moment in this conversation in this minute is different from the value that's calling my attention right now but at the very bottom we may share these values in general it's just that in this subject this minute this conversation something else is calling your attention that's different from what's calling my attention this is when we bring intentionality and then we bring responsibility. We are responsible, which is we have the ability, you know, the word responsibility has the word ability in, in it. We have the ability to say or do something different that is more in alignment. We reconnect with a mature, loving, conscious, kind, compassionate, capable adult we are. We have that responsibility because this is how we create a different world, a conversation at a time. So when you put these three words together, awareness, intentionality, and let's see if I can do this and responsibility what we have in this three word is air like the air we breathe that we forget we're either breathing we need to remember this is like air we need to bring awareness intentionality and responsibility did my in explanation of intentionality help you brendan and how do i want to show up how do I need to stretch here in this conversation? Oh, you know, I'm considering them a robot. And I am considering myself as the one who needs to withstand this conversation again and again and again. I'm creating a split here. Wait a minute. How do I want to show up here? I, 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 well, I picked the complicated one because mm -hmm. it's apparent. It's a shit. It's okay. I mean, things are all messed up and um, or whatever, but uh, but yeah, I think on my best day, then I'm like, I'm gonna like connect the story to like the truth of the story. Uh huh. Because yeah, it's just like she's not gonna feel the feelings. It's just gonna relay the outrage or whatever, and that's just not interesting. To me, I don't think it's important either. Rather, be like, that sounds hard. Mm -hmm. What was that like, or whatever? But uh, uh, yeah, that's like that would be my intention on my best day is to like be kind about be kind about what is being relayed because it's a story of like pain or outrage or something. So right, and here's what I want to say to all of us, including you. When someone keeps telling us a story, it is usually because they have not felt heard. And there's still, especially if it's a story of pain, it's usually because there's still a lot of uh, pain that has not been, not just processed, but transformed into healing. And so every time they do it, they try to get some of that healing. 
I experienced, because I go through this with my brother, mm -hmm. he tells me the same stories over and over. Uh, my experience of it, of it is that... Mike, it, Mike, so that people online can hear you. Sorry. My experience is that um, the connection is not there. Yeah. And he's just talking because he doesn't know how to connect. And so in and what would you like in those moments? What's that? What would you like in those moments when you realize he doesn't know how to connect? What would you like? I, I would like to feel more that there was more going on between us person, you know, like Great. So bring the intention of I want to bring forth connection. So you will need to do something different in that moment. I will need to. Yes. Instead of letting him continue telling him the story that you have heard a million times. Because in every relationship, we both contribute to how things are, and we forget. And that's why we create the split where the other is bad and we are good. So then we want the other to fix it, which again, who could fix things all the time? Who had the power, the ability, the money, the energy, the knowledge, the resources to fix things when you were a kid? You? No, others. So when internally we are in the, I'm in a disagreement, I'm in an argument, and I want you to fix it, our communication went down a few years or decades, and now we're back being a child. That's why let's grow our communication up and let it catch up with who we are in these adult suits that we have now. So Noah. That's, so that's the responsibility. That's right. the responsibility. The responsibility for the way the conversation is going rather than yes. blaming the other, even if it is their fault. <laughs> <laughs> even if it is their fault, well, I'm just joking. yes, yes, yes. Well, sometimes we recognize out of the intentional, the awareness, the intentionality, the thing that I'm trying to convey to all of you is get out of the automatic mode of getting caught in an argument and then I don't know what to do. But rather, you are in an argument, be aware, or you're going to meet with your friend, you're going to talk to your brother, you're going to see, most likely because election is coming, you're going to get more questions about politics and the election. So you are going to maybe go visit your parents or, okay, so you're getting closer to the possibility of this argument or there's intention in, in, in intensity in the school district and you've been hearing from other people, okay, this conversation is about to happen. You're about to hear this. So know that, have that awareness, bring an intention, when the argument is happening, in your mind, notice I'm creating a split here. You are this, I am that. Bring an intention, take responsibility, say something different. Instead of being automatic robots, like Brandon said, do something different. And so I want to do a little exercise of how we do something different. Are we willing to do that? That will require us to stand up, not just yet, and to walk around, but first, I'm going to ask you to, um, I'm going to give you a piece of paper, and on one side, you're going to write what you hear from the other person that puts you in disagreement mode or argument mode, whether it's a question or a sentence, what do you hear from them? Specifically? specifically. So just one sentence, don't make it like long. And write it with a sharpie so that it's clear enough. Try to use your best calligraphy because you're going to give it to another person and they're going to say this to you. So we're going to really get into practice today because I want to leave you with tools. So <laughs> <laughs> Are, 
are you are you looking at how far the the door is <laughs> close <laughs> oh we only have okay so you're gonna you're gonna write this remember we all came here to learn together so you're gonna write this and on the other side you're gonna write your intention one word what's your intention here whether it's compassion kindness understanding openness humility so you're going to write a sentence that you don't like hearing that you know launches you into the argument and on the other side one word your intention is this clear what we're going to do yeah okay so let's get one person to pass out uh, and it may be written on the other side because this is scrap paper so um you know, just choose paper that has, that you can write over on both sides. Thank you. And so everybody take a pen and one piece of paper. And so just write the sentence on one side and the intention on the other side of the paper. And thank you so much, Jimmy, for making sure I don't get a... And it was the other block, right? Okay, thank you. Thank you. And Danielle, you too, if, you're, if you want to, up to you. I'm split in my... Okay, you're split. You have a self-other split. <laughs> <laughs> All within myself. Right. Okay, so I did it too, just so you know, we're all learning here. Okay, so I'm going to, oh, I can't, if I stand up, oh, I can get that mic, right? Okay, you? All right, so let's say here I have uh, my sentence. Can you all see it? It's a fact. <laughs> okay. 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 So what the, how we're going to do this exercise is that um, we are going to um, James, are you willing to be my volunteer for now? Okay, can you stand up for a second? So you're going to tell me this in the best way that could lead us into an argument. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this word, which is my intention, which is openness. And so I'm going to try to respond in a different way than I usually respond. I have no idea how I'm going to respond. I'm just going to try to say something different than what I usually say. Okay. We're ready for this. 
guess. Climate change is a hoax from left-wing Californians. Wow, it seems like you're kind of like upset about this. Yeah, yeah, you kind of like even like got red or something. Okay, oh, okay, thanks. Um, can I ask you to do it too, Dylan? Yeah. Don't you know climate change is just a hoax from left-wing Californians? Okay. You want me to read that one? Yes, yes. Read that. Climate change is a hoax left wing from left wing Californians. My word is. Wait, wait, wait. No, I'm just giving you an example. Oh, an example. Well, I'm yeah. saying we are indoctrinated. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Um, and I want to remain blameless. Right. You do. Yes. I'm just giving you an example of how we're going to do this exercise. Okay. So I'm just connecting to the word openness right now with what you said. Um, yeah, it seems like you have a very um, strong opinion about this climate change. Do you know any like um, other parties or other people who may think of climate change and they're not necessarily left wing? I don't. I don't want to listen to them. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, what happens when you listen to them? I get uncomfortable. Mm. Yeah, most of us don't like getting uncomfortable. I get that. Right. Okay, so I'm having a conversation. I'm not having an argument. But I had no idea what I was going to say. Okay, let's do one more. Climate change is a hoax from left-wing Californians. Really? <laughs> I don't know, it just is. <laughs> yeah, you know, I thank you for telling me that I have other um, other experiences. And um, I'm, I'm not sure that I'm ready to tell you yet, but but you're saying it just is like, how, how do you know? How are you so certain? I did my research and I heard it on the internet and I've heard a lot of politically minded people that I believe tell me that. Mm, yeah, so there are some people that you follow and you believe and, and you've done certain research in, on the internet and other places and that's how you know that this is a fabrication from West Le uh, Left Wings, California. Right. Yeah. Oh. Wow. It just feels a little um, hard for me to hear it right now. Because I, you know, I've just been seeing so many changes that I've experienced in my own life. Um, I'd love to get some of that research. Can you, would you be willing to share that with me? <laughs> okay. All right. So what I was doing is not reacting how I would usually react, like what? Uh, and or or maybe like shut down because I was consistently trying to get connected with my intention, which was openness. So what we yes, Patricia. So would you where my mind went was uh, to say where my mind went was to say, did you know that there's flooding in different countries and people have to, uh, my, my intention was to educate in a way by yes. saying, did you know? And education. But that's not agenda. openness. Right. Because again, educate, when we're trying to educate the other, we're having an agenda. But it's not openness. It's not openness. Yes. Is that the same as if, your intention, or so-called intention, is to help. Is that also an agenda, or can that be an agenda? Yes, because did the other person tell me that they need help? No. no. So then I'm having an agenda, even though it may seem like a good one, still an agenda. Well, but 
because okay, I'm considering then that they ask. did. Oh, if they did right. ask, then that's were then we're for yeah, then we're having another conversation. Then I help. Yes. Well, yes, but it, but in that case, is agenda is is to help an agenda or no, no, no. we're in dialogue right. now. Right. We're not in an right. argument. Okay, so you're all going to stand up and you're going to um, walk around. You're going to meet someone, and that someone. You're going to show them your piece of paper that someone's going to read that piece of paper to you in the best way that can get you into an argument. And then you're going to look at your intention, take a breath and respond in a different way. And then you're going to do it again, because I'd love for each person to do it five times to get three different ways of five different ways of responding to this. For the people online, I don't know how we're going to do this. <laughs> I was thinking that we would work in a in a bigger group. So um, maybe I don't know. Maybe Noam and and Tia, you can you can get creative. Okay, great. Okay. All right. Are you ready? So stand up and start walking. You're going to talk to different people. They're going to read what you wrote and then respond in a different way. So if we're doing one-on-one, -on -one, yes. one person does that, the other person does that. Yes. Oh, wait, one, she'll show me hers, and then I'll show her. After, you, after she's done, yes, okay. you switch, yes. Hmm? Okay. <laughs> oh, sorry. So remember, each time you respond in a different way based on your intention. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think I've heard 
story. Exactly. Okay, and I had that. Oh, we already. Yeah. That sounds like we had the same story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sometimes I make it about me. They're asking you questions. Well, I don't really. It's not my thing. Do you want to explain what? I don't know. So go to another person. Go to a switch again. Never tell a joke. So serious. Yeah. What are you watching? What don't I understand? What don't I understand? Yeah. Trump is the savior of our country. Okay, let's do one more, one more person, one more time. Let's come back and let's uh, let's talk about how did that go? Was it hard? Yeah, Noam says yes. Yeah, it was hard. And one strategy that seemed to work was to just sort of repeat what they said, you know, what's that called? You know, I don't know. You well, know it could be it? Um, reflection, it could yeah. be mirroring. Yeah, yeah there, it has mirroring. different, different yeah. words. Yeah. It, 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 it gave me a moment to sort of pause and breathe and not be confrontational because okay. I'm just sort of 
you know. Yeah. I think and I to maybe you remember your in, your intention. And to remember my intention, which okay. was curiosity. Beautiful. So, okay. Any other? How was this for you? This experiment of having different ways of responding. Um, so I noticed myself. So the prompt obviously forced me to address the question in a new way, but I almost immediately noticed I started to just form new patterns. Uh -huh. I would start saying the new response over and over, you know. Uh -huh. And but I of course challenged myself to stop doing that as much as possible. But it's hard. Yeah. You pause for a while because it's, it's new and it's yeah. Yeah. It's difficult. It's hard to be an adult, you know. It's not easy being green. <laughs> Right? Much, much more easy to be passive. Exactly. Yeah. It's much easier to be passive because that worked for you mm -hmm. at some point in your past. And being an adult means having more responsibilities. That's just part of what being an adult is. We can't change that. It's what we signed up for coming to this world, embodying being a human being and not maybe like Luna being fed and patted and, you know, comforted whenever Luna wants to, maybe. <laughs> you know, that's what we signed up for. It's hard. Yeah. Um, other comments, questions, objections to this, to what you experienced? Who found it kind of like, wow, I have different ways of saying this, of responding to this. Did any of you have that experience? Yes. 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 Wanna oh. have a mic? Because my intention was also curiosity or, or, or listening. And so it was a, like sort of a series of questions about the topic. And there were diff different questions. Some of them were sort of just variations on a particular theme. But some of them actually started, felt like they were, had the capacity or the, at least the potential to drill down a little bit deeper into the issue. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. So if, um, if you were to leave here with one thing is DSD, if you want to grow your communication, and let it catch up with the adult that you are, do something different. And what you do, this DSD, do something different, is based on air, awareness, intentionality, responsibility. That's how we can all bring forth the kind of world relationships, life, we want to have. And know that it will take time. What I'm suggesting is not easy. It is hard. It is simple and hard. Simple doesn't mean easy. But that's what we're here for. We're not here to be the koala bears on the hammock drinking a margarita. We are here to show up in a different way so that we can bring forth more equality, more equity, more compassion, more love, more connectedness, and to remind ourselves, yes, we're all connected. Whatever we say or do will impact me, you, and all of us. So in that spirit, the way I'd like to um, end today is by bringing forth the air, awareness, intentionality, and responsibility today, which is Yom Kippur. In the Jewish tradition, Yom Kippur is a day of atonement, is the day in which we take responsibility for having hurt others with our words, with our behaviors. We all do. You know, one of the phrases that a a teacher that Noam and I study with is don't be afraid, be confident. Don't be afraid of hurt, hurting others. Be confident. You will hurt others. 
You know, it's part of being human. You're going to say something, the other person is going to get upset, even though you didn't have the intention of hurting them. We did. So in the spirit of Yom Kippur, of um, atonement and taking responsibility that as adults, we have hurt others and we will hurt others. Um, let's just recognize just something or someone in this moment that maybe we have hurt. And in that spirit, let's have the intention, even if it's energetically, even if we don't go and talk to them, the intention of apologizing and having regretted what we have done or what we have said and bringing that responsibility that we have as conscious, mature, beautiful, loving, capable, kind, wise adults. Okay? So I just want to um, just take a moment for you to think about something or something that you said or did that you now regret. Or that person to whom you said something or did something and they felt hurt by with these beautiful bells behind us, this perfect background, and just bring them into our hearts. And let's recognize that we are sorry. And that in the future, we want to be aware, have intentions, and take responsibility for the way we communicate. And if you're willing, I would love to hear just um, one thing that you took away from today. And I don't know where the mic is, so. I can go while you're tracking it down if you want. Yes. Um, one thing I'm taking away from today is uh, the reminder that uh, I feel like I support a lot of people in looking at doing different ways and the reminder that I get that also, I get to do things different also. Yes, and, uh, beautiful. Yeah some reflection on me. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Tia. So for me, it was just being more intentional in how I, I mean, it sounds so obvious, right? But in understanding the importance, if I want to grow as a person, that it, it, this is a great way to do it, just yeah. being more intentional. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I enjoyed the whole thing, and sort of repeating it all. I think the, the phrase that stuck with me that is growing up my, um, my, way of communicating you know I that I just really appreciate that um, and that you know along with the responsibility bit uh, it is on me to improve my communication where it, it needs improvement so thank you thank you thank you Noam. Patricia has raised her hand mine was intentionality also that's a big one to remember that uh, what is my intention you know and um, also um, there's just so much here when we agree to cultivate that the things that we agree to cultivate and that last exercise needs needs a lot more work i had a really hard time with that mm -hmm. yeah okay thank you yeah thank I you patricia the differentiation between agenda and intention and then also the linking then 
the, uh, somehow like even children have agendas, you know, like needs mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe rooted in that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen. Um, um, yeah, the, uh, I think the atten attention, intention and agenda like distinction, um, and then, uh, yeah, I noticed like I was trying to do curiosity and then I was working with Dylan and I was like, and then his was listening and I was like, that's a lot easier than like trying to summon curiosity in this moment. Right. Just to actually do listening. Yeah. Maybe a little like more attainable intention. So good to notice that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Brandon. Yeah, sometimes our intentions can be too lofty, and then we feel disappointed in ourselves. So, kindness your well, kindness. I don't think I can kindness, right? right. It's, yeah, it's yeah. too triggering, and it's yeah. so good to know where we are, because we don't want to go into the panic zone. We want to go into the stretch zone. Yeah, great. Um, let's pass the mic to this side. Um, I think one takeaway is that uh, in, in all of, well, at least in my communication, probably similarly, that there's there's going to be some intention, whether that's whether we're aware of that or not. Mm -hmm. um, and so the um, kind of getting back to the like the actually what I'm doing here is I'm asking for help or I'm looking for care and then how that can really that the awareness of that immediately. Um, clarifies that intention and then and has the um, the downstream effect of then changing the way that I'm I'm communicating that rather than just the habitual pattern of saying something obscure and then expecting a, a, the right response right even we're not actually yes uh, expressing that clearly yeah great thank you thank you James Brid Danielle Robert uh, I guess my takeaway is um, more simple. I just appreciated the practice of being able to generate the questions for the curiosity that I want to hold. Because mm. in the moment, I can't think of anything. I'm yes. Off. So doing it in a not direct. Yes. And even the noticing, I'm, I get closed off. The in, intention could be, I want to learn to open. Yeah. Beautiful. Danielle, anything? Um, there's a whole bunch of things that could have, you know, fallen into this uh, category, but the last thing that I've really enjoyed was the differentiation between the panic zone and the um, and the stretch zone. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was I, in the way I teach, we talk about small success oriented steps, but that's around kids. So it was kind of fun to have some adult language. To, yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Robert, anything yeah. for you? I think one of my intentions was to respect other people's opinions and to be willing to explore what they're saying, be transparent with them about what I'm saying. Because so all of those subjects are worth looking at. Yeah, beautiful. Jimmy, did you go? I don't think so. Did you? Did you say something? No. No. Would you like to? Sure. That um, what I'm going to take away is that paying attention, listening, feels a lot better than being defensive. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. And speaking of which, of listening, um, you know, sometimes I want to give you homework. So I have some podcast episodes where I specifically give more examples and talk about things we talked about today. And um, for those of you who don't know, um, I have the Language Alchemy podcast. It's on every podcast platform you can imagine, uh, including Spotify and Apple Podcast and, and YouTube. Um, and so uh, podcast episode number 35 is called Choosing Peace in Your Communication. Episode number 36, Want to Give Peace a Chance, Resist Your Reactivity. Uh, episode number 64. I'll just tell you the numbers and the names and then you can say, okay, that I want to check out. The, all the episodes are about 15 minutes long. 
Um, five signs it's time to shift your, re your relationship dynamics. 105, I think this is gonna, this is one of the most popular, um, most frequently downloaded episodes. Are you communicating with an intention or an agenda? 105. Uh, 107, unveiling the top communication mistake in disagreements. And 108, navigating disagreements, the path to meaningful connections. So you can check out those episodes. I will be here again on November 9th um, after the elections. And uh, I'm also gonna be here on December 7th and January, what is it? 12th. 12th, I think it is, it's a Sunday. We're gonna switch them to Sundays because parking is hard. Sundays, parking is free. Um, so, and more people come on, on Sundays. So November 9th, December 7th, and January 12th, we think. Um, thank you all so much. I also wanna say in November, I'm starting an eight week online course called Choosing True Connection where we're gonna get into the nitty gritty of a lot of what we get here, but much, much deeper. You can check it out. I think the, um, yeah, Choosing True Connection is here, so you can check out, check that out. If you wanna get communication tools in your inbox every week, and some of you get them, and like Patricia and writing beautiful emails about, oh, I love this newsletter, or Tia, um, then you can, check in the newsletter and sign up for the newsletter. And then I started group coaching, which is for just 10 people where we work specifically with your communication struggles in February. And that will go, it's a three month program uh, from, four, from February 4th to April 29th. Britt is gonna be part of that program. And I have eight spots left. It's only for 10, I have eight spots left. Um, so you can check this out. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And remember this, you are a mature, conscious, loving, compassionate, capable, kind adult. So just remember that, okay? Thank you.